Hi, I'm Ruben Saltzman with Structure Tech Home Inspections. Today I'm going to show you what a four-year-old anode rod looked like in my water heater, and I'm going to take you through the steps of replacing it. So earlier this year, I discussed this point of use water heater that I had in my kitchen, how it had failed and how I had frustrations with the warranty. And I ended up checking on the anode rod after I believe it was one year of service and the anode rod was completely gone, just gone. And it made me think, all right, what the heck is going on with my traditional water heater? Now that thing has a longer warranty. It's a much bigger tank. It has a much larger anode rod. So it ought to last a while, but you know, I should probably check on it. So I, I've tried doing this in the past and to remove the anode rod on a water heater, you use a one and one sixteenth inch socket wrench. Uh, it's a, it's a big socket going to look something like this and you, you get your socket on there and you crank on it. I tried doing that and I could not get it to budge. So I ended up putting a pipe on the end of my socket wrench to give me a ton of leverage. And then when I did that, I ended up twisting the pipes on my water heater. The whole water heater started to twist. And I went, oh boy, this is a mess. So I ended up getting my impact driver. I've got a, uh, this is a Milwaukee fuel brushless impact driver. And I put a one and one sixteenth inch socket head on here. No luck. Didn't have enough torque with this guy. And this thing's, I mean, it's torquey, but it was not enough. So, you know, I, I kind of gave up after that. that. That was a while ago. But this recent incident renewed my curiosity and I said, I need to get in there. So I got myself a, this one is a Milwaukee Fuel brushless impact wrench. This is a half inch impact wrench. So this is a serious tool. This thing's hefty. Um, and I thought, if this thing doesn't get it out, nothing's going to get it out. Because I, I was dying to see what it looked like. Uh, what I probably should have done is bought a six-point socket head um, instead of using 12-point. They're, they're really better. And, and using ones that are made specifically for impact wrenches. But I didn't want to. So I didn't. I, I used my 12 point socket and it worked just fine. But I thought as long as I'm going to the trouble of taking this all apart and seeing what it looks like, I should probably just assume that it's going to be toast and someday it's going to be toast and I should put it, I should get a replacement. I should have it all set to go. Now, after doing some podcasting with a good plumber friend of mine, he said the only thing that they use today when they're servicing water heaters is they put in these electric anode rods. Well, I guess it's not even a rod. Well, maybe it is. They call it a powered anode rod. It looks like this. This is made by, oh, sorry, it's upside down. This is made by Coro Protect. I guess it's supposed to be like corrosion protect. And yeah, it's, it, it call, it's called a powered anode rod. And the idea is that you always run a little bit of electricity to this thing and it's gonna last forever. It's gonna keep your water heater from dying and it's gonna protect the tank. So my plumber buddy, Tim said, Ruben, this is the only way to go. So I got one, I had it ready and I can show you all the steps it took me to take the old one out and pop this new thing in there. I'll start the project by turning off the power to my water heater. Next, I'm gonna turn off the water coming into the water heater and then I'm gonna go around to a few of my faucets and open up just the hot. I did this in the basement, the first floor, and the second floor. Next, I go down to the water heater itself and I'm gonna drain out about a gallon of water. I don't need to fully drain it or take a huge amount of water out. Just about a gallon is fine so that I don't have water coming out the top of the tank. And now the moment of truth. I've got my impact wrench. I put it on here and uh, I remember to put it in reverse before pulling the trigger. And here we go. Nothing to it, comes right out. 
And would you look at this? That is a wire rod. There is no more sacrificial metal left. This thing is completely corroded away to nothing. That anode rod is gone after four years. Here's another shot of it laying on the floor. You can see there is no redeeming qualities to this. It's, it's toast. So next, we're gonna install the new one. You start out by following the manufacturer's instructions. They tell you to wrap six turns of Teflon tape around the threads. I didn't count, but I think I got pretty close. And then you install it in the water heater. Now, the manufacturer tells you you could use a 31 millimeter socket wrench to get this thing tightened in place. I don't have one. I didn't care to go to the store to buy one. I knew it was gonna stick out from the tank, so I'm slumming it here using my adjustable wrench to get this tight. Wasn't a big deal. Well, with that tightened, it's time to go around and turn the water back on and turn the water off to the rest of my fixtures. Next, I carefully inspect the area where I installed it to make sure it's not leaking. And finally, we connect power to it. The manufacturer says you remove one of the tank screws and you take the ground connection on the power cord and you run the little loop of wire through your screw and tighten the screw back onto the top of the tank. Easy peasy. This was so easy, I did not even bother going to get a drill to do it, which is very unlike me. Next, I just pull the wires apart a little bit, pop this thing into the top of the powered anode rod, and then plug the plug into the wall. I didn't show you that part because it's pretty simple. And with that, I'm done. So that's that. That was the entire process for replacing the anode rod in my water heater. And now that I used an electric one, I'm never gonna have to touch it again. The manufacturer says all you need to do is look at the plug and make sure that the light is on. If the light is on, it's working. There's nothing else that you need to do. So if my water heater does fail in the next 20 years, or I move out, I will report back. I'm Ruben Saltzman with Structure Tech Home Inspections. Thanks for watching. Take care.